Okay, now uh, let's continue uh, part three for the scientific units and their conversions uh, in physical science 201. All right. Uh, now uh, we uh, introduced five out of seven base units and uh, introduced if they have uh, units in both English and the metric system, we introduced both of them, right? And we introduced uh, those units like length, mass, and involve uh, chaotic conversion factors among the English scientific units, but very simple and straightforward by 10, 10, 10 based metric system conversion factors, right? So that's the easy one the science prefer. And we also introduced temperature. In science, you, use, you only use Kelvin, but uh, in the United States, we use Fahrenheit, and in the world, we use Celsius. All right. So, also we mentioned uh, the temperature scale conversion is not as simple as length, mass, or time. Just have a multiple uh, folders uh, have the uh, ways of the other ones uh, multiple. It's not that, like that. You need involve some in. Uh, converging equations, but we're going to talk about this in the next step. So when we talk about those units, then we have to deal with their conversions because sometimes the big units for the same entity, say links, is uh, not fitting to the uh, calculation then or the measurements or the measurements data doesn't fit into the equation. Either way, vice versa, we have to convert them. So in order to uh, uh, make the students, right, understand the conversion factor process, right, or converting unit converting process, and I have to introduce uh, a concept which is widely used by the almost entire nation. Right? I think I already mentioned that, but I am totally against, right, and uh, I will give you the reason why I am against it and uh, what's wrong with that and then uh, why we have to use my method right which is a brain function related right conversion now that method is called factor dash label unit cancellation method all right and that was invented i think at least half century ago at least half century ago because there was a published paper in 1983 from two teachers, science teacher, I think from uh, a school or university in New York City and on the chemical education, the journal of chemical education and I had a copy of it but I, I don't have the uh, uh, scan form for you to read it and I will do so when I go to the office I scan and uh, you don't try to copy, I sent to you All right. now that method tells us I may already introduce in certain section of physical science last week, but they tell you this method is able to convert a large unit of a certain entity all the way to small, small units for the same entity within or outside one system, which is metric or English. So, in other words, you are given English units and uh, Using that method, you can uh, big units, and you can convert English big units for lengths, for instance, and all the way to a metric system units, tiny, small, mini, micrometer or picometer, just for one step, all right? And never gone wrong. Now, that is not true. And I, from my experience, my observations, and I've seen so many students, my students from uh, chemistry. Right, from a lab experiment, that data they measure and I want to put in the equation, they have to convert into or do some calculation. And they forgot how to convert units and they use their method, which is that one. It's called a fact label, right? Unit cancellation. And they, they have to flip. But they don't know how to flip. They forgot how to flip, flip the conversion factor. Then they completely lost or end up with the wrong units completely funny. Sometimes it's just out of blue. Don't know what happened for those students to end up with that units, which is strange. So I want to tell you that. 
that is that that method try to eliminate your brain function, human brain function, and it tells you you don't have to use brain to think or understand the conversion process or understand units, but you just have to plug in into the equation. You will never go wrong, which is a lie. All right, I want you to pay attention to that. And it's not because it's a lie. It is even worse because that method gets you to the point you completely become clueless. You never know how to use your brain to think. That is the point I want to point out. That is the worst part of that method. So that method tells you this. Let me put down there. All right, let me put down there. It's not in the notes. I was called it's rotten, rotten factor label unit cancellation method. Right? What they want you to do, they're gonna give you a grit, a grit, a grit. To use. What kind of grit? It's like this. Alright? And then the uh, split in different sections. And then uh, for you to plug in the conversion factors you choose, uh, of your choice. And then you have to know how to flip. And upside down or not, then the get numerical value divide each other or somebody, but, but they basically want you to completely multiply. They don't even use, use uh, division. And then they want you to end up with some kind of uh, answer with the unit you want to reach. Now that is not true. That is not going to give you right answer all the time. Sometimes it gives you wrong answer. Now, but what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is I want to tell you the unit cancellation or conversion conversion uh, 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 process it's very simple all right it's very simple it requires your natural thinking not using any grid you plug in all right so let me give you an example this is rotten now what is the example i already said in one session in camp, uh, in, in this uh, course this semester last week i say if if you have thirty dollars cash, right, right, on a tax-free day, right, the watermelon price is the price is two dollar ninety nine cents a piece now question is here how many piece of melon your thirty dollars can buy at the store. Say the wall. Right? Now what do you find the answer from your brain? Your answer definitely will be 10. Because tax free, right? No tax. So $2.99, easy to run up to $3. $30, 10 times of $3. So $10 of oh, 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 each piece is $3. The 30 to 10 times you can get 10 piece. But the question is, what arithmetic operation you're gonna operate for this answer? One of the students answered yes uh, last week say division. So it's a division. But here, this rotten method tells you everything will be multiplied. See, multiply, multiply, multiply. Never told you. We're involved with division. That is totally, totally rotten and is not going to get you understand the conversion factor uh, uh, or conversion process. Now, how 
do you end up with correct answer with the natural thinking of division? You tell yourself, right? So what is the answer for this? For this kind of problem, the answer would be, now of course you have to list all these conditions for this word problem, right? That's an algebra word problem. That's a simple word problem. This is purchase. Why I'm using this kind of example involve money? Because money you deal with every day. Right? You have to deal with money every day. And you have to go to a school to buy things, and everything is going to be related to price. So the price tag. What is the price tag actually at this point? The price tag, actually, it is the conversion factor. Conversion factor converts what? To what? It converts from money, monetary entity to material. You're going to purchase itemized entity, right? So, in other words, your list of information you have is what? You know, one, in actual, you have this. One, no, it's not one matter, one piece of matter, right? One piece of matter, one piece matter of matter, right? Is the exchange at, at the market, exchange like a trade, right? Trade. You have one, one piece of matter, somebody give you money to trade with your water matter, you give a price. So you say, okay. You want to get one piece of melon from me, I'm the grower for watermelon, you give me $2.99 or $3, right? So then that's the equivalent. That is equivalent. See that? Now, what is that? That's, that's, the, that's the price tag. But that is the conversion factor. Do you agree? Yes, it is conversion factor because on the textbook, all the conversion factor was listed to what? All the conversion factor was listed as one of something equal non unit not more than one of something right like a one yard equals three feet so that's one something equals three something else correct one mile equal 1.6 kilometer so one mile is one something equal more than one of something in metric system we call kilometer but they both describing the links Right? But in different systems. One's the English system mile, a little metric system kilometer, so that's the difference, right? But that is the textbook style of a conversion factor. You go to check the textbook, right? They normally give you a list. Or a table, a table, and a list of something. One piece of one piece of uh, 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 one piece of uh, 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 honeydew, how much, one ear of corn, how much, right? That's the list. And in, in other words, uh, uh, one uh, backpack, uh, school backpack is $12 or something, $20. So that is price tag, but our price tag actually is the conversion factors. Between what? Between the itemized merchandise and the money, right? And the one is going to be at unity one, the other one is more than unity of one, so larger than one, correct? So that's conversion. But can we use that conversion factor directly into calculation in mathematics to find the answer how many pieces of wordland to use? It is not possible. Why? Because this equal sign is already there. You want to plug in equations, right? So what happened in your mind when you figured out 10 pieces, what you did is two process, you skipped, but you understood. So what it did is you convert this price tag into a per based fractional based conversion factor. So what is that? That means what? Every watermelon you price at $2.99. So what is the price tag $2.99 slash piece each piece of what? Correct? So that is not this is the price tag, right? And this price tag actually, literally, you are able to see. I drew a picture. I think either in your class or another class, whichever class. I drew a picture. You go to Walmart, right? You go to Walmart. I drew, and then I, 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 I can't erase it. You, 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 you see those little, little, little cardboard jar, and then they have, right, right. They have those uh, 
watermelon is packed in there, you know. That's a little, little van down there, that's a little van down there, watermelon, watermelon, be there. Alright, that's another one, another one. So here's another one, alright. Alright, and then you have those uh, on the little wooden rack, and then that corner, you see a sign, right? You see a sign, uh, or sign posted on the side of the, of the cartoon, and it says $2.99 a piece. You see that? Now, this is the converted fact. Convert your money into a, into a piece of watermelons. Right? And have you ever seen any price tag of upside down? Piece? $2.99? No. So you understand. It's based on per piece. Right? Per piece of watermelon, how much money could it exchange with? Then how much money is going to be a value larger than one? Per means unity. Per, right? Per, per, per watermelon. So then if you involve this, then what do you do? You did not use multiplication. You use division. So what happens? Solution right here. So you actually have $30 on top as numerator. And you go in to use that numerator to divide price tag. Now let's go one step at a time. Slow down. Make sure you understand. Make sure you understand. Make correct answer. And then take one step at a time. Don't want to do multiple conversion and it was wrong and you don't even know if it's wrong, you don't even know which step is wrong. I want you to, to go slow and get familiar with it and then get get used to it and then slowly you speed up and you get, oh I understand, I know how to do that. Dr. Chan's method is much, much easy, much, much head home, head home and relate to my brain function and never get me wrong, get the correct answer. That's what you need. So what happened? Actually, your answer got 10 pieces from here. I spent time on it as a reason, all right? I am not just a skull at that rotten method. I'm gonna explain to you why that method's wrong, mine's correct, right? This is the way you're, because I want everybody to use your brain to think, to do science math, not just plug in. Plug in, you don't even know how, and, they, and it was wrong, you don't even know where it's wrong, right? So what is the price tag? Well, I said two dollar ninety nine cents per piece. So you put two dollar nine. Just put the price tag as what? As the denominator of what? Denominator of the fraction. Now this is a we call it complex fraction or not, whichever it is. Then what do you you you, you remember? If you remember at elementary school, you learn fraction. Then you say, okay, I don't like fraction. I hate it because it's not your fault. It's your teacher's fault, right? He or she did not know himself or herself and then did not know how to teach you either and they end up with you uh, over your head and it's, oh, fraction terrible and I'm, 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 I quit, right? I quit. Don't quit, follow, follow me, you, 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 get, get over. So this is a fraction inside a fraction, correct? And then you divide the fraction. So you consider, well, this is also a fraction, $30 a fraction, why? $30 can easily be written as 30 over one, right? Because you divide by one doesn't change. So you have a fraction on top as a numerator and the fraction bottom as a denominator. So this time simple. You just first don't touch the numerator and then do this to do something to the denominator as dividend, right? Dividend. So what is the next step? You are learning the past. The next step is what? You reciprocate. Reciprocate the denominator, right? And then after you flip it. You multiply on top into the numerator. So you reciprocate this denominator and then move this reciprocated denominator into what? Into piece, watermelon over $2.99. And this one going to be used on top to multiply the numerator. Multiply right here. So what do you end up with? What do you end up with is this. The following step, let me use this space and take the watermelon off. Ooh, I'm thirsty. I need some watermelon. Alright, and uh, huh, I got space. Alright, so uh, what happened? The next step will be you copy down the $30. The $30 will be on the side. Now, you, don't tell me you, you're confused. That's what you did. How did you find this 10 piece of watermelon already in your mind, or in your head, right? That's how you did it. 
30 dollars on the side, and then multiply this. So you multiply, you can use parentheses, right? So you multiply what? Right? Piece or mountain over $2.99. Now, you see the dollar sign, what is on numerator? It's on numerator. When you move side, it's still, still is new numerator. It's a fraction, time fraction, multiply fraction. You see, that's not fraction. That's a, a, just a regular number. Oh, it is. Every number can be written into a format of fraction by what? If I put over one, put a one under. Was one down there? One down there, it doesn't change it. Well, still. So now you understand it's a 30 over one multiply piece over to the power of 99, right? If you know that, then what happened? You are able to what? You are able to, you are able to connect these two lines to make a fraction, a continued fraction. On top, there are two numerators. One is a 30 dollars. Another one is a piece of water matter. How many do you want? You find out. And the bottom is one multiply 2,099. Right? Then you have what? Dollar sign on top, dollar sign on the bottom. Anything in the fraction, as long as they are same, they all cancel them. You can cancel them, right? So you can cancel what? Cancel dollar sign, cancel dollar sign. So dollar sign disappears. That's what you want, right? You don't want to get your 10 piece dollar, right? <laughs> You want a ten, you got a ten pieces of water matter. You don't want to get a ten pieces of matter and dollar. You don't want to get a strange answer like that. Dollar sign should no longer belong to the answer. There's no place for dollar sign. Agree? So you agree. Dollar sign is gone. And then if it's three, it's two ninety nine run up to three, that gives you ten. It's Thirty divided by three, right? That's ten. So now it's ten. Ten what? Piece copy bonds. Piece what? Piece of matter, right? You, you don't have to. That's a shorthand piece, right? So that's the answer of it. No dollar sign, that's how you end up. So it is not multiply, it's division right here. And don't do this multiple multiplication in this rotten method because if you not, if you forgot to flip one, which is a reciprocate, and then you end up with some unit become squared or cubed, and some unit can never cancel, become squared. It's supposed to be canceled. In this case, if you did not flip, what happened? If you did not reciprocate, what happened? You multiply, plug in here. Okay, if you use that rotten method, thirty dollars, and there's a price tag. What price tag is a two dollar ninety nine per piece, right? That's a conversion fact. Oh, okay, okay, two dollar ninety nine cent piece. Now, can you solve the problem? Never. You become what? Dollar sign in square and thirty times three. That's ninety. So ninety dollars squared piece. The answer will be what? Ninety dollar piece. Is that your answer? That's of course wrong, right? That's why that method eliminates your brain function. Normal, proper brain function. Try to give you something to use as a plugin. You don't have to think. That's try to what? Downgrade your intelligence. Don't let anybody do this to you. So completely forget about this fact label, unit cancellation, rotten method. Let me put the rotten all the way back here. Rotten method. Use mine. One at a time. One step at a time. So this is an explanation how to use my ways in division. And then one step at a time. Okay, let's 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 give you something else, right? Here, we're gonna introduce the conversion factors, right? And on your notes, you already see that. So this is gonna be the conversion factor part. Conversion factor. Conversion factors, right? Conversion factors. And unit conversion factors. And then you have uh, uh, still have two uh, uh, system, right? Two system. One is English, one is metric. But this time we're not going to list the side by side the column. We list the line by line. So in the notes, I go to the metric first. Right? Says so links, links, links. Right? So I'm going to do metric system conversion. So metric, right? And then from the textbook or not, we're gonna find you're gonna find any material that says metric system, it go by meter, right? 
meter. So it says one meter equal one thousand millimeter or uh, one hundred centimeter, right? So so we say okay. The one, for example, it says one meter equal one hundred centimeter, right? Right. I said because this is a conversion factor textbook tech, textbook style. You cannot plug into the equation to directly solve a problem because the equal sign will be embedded inside this converting factor as a denominator. You, know, you can never get rid of it. And then you end up with something somewhere with an equal sign in there. That's not possible, right? Because you cannot cancel equal sign. So we have to convert this converting factor into what? Into a what? Con convert it into a what? Into a, a per price tag style. So this is going to be what? This gives you a Style is actually 100 centimeter what? Per meter. Right? Now that is just like the price tag right here. Look, look at these two. Right? And then you are able to put in denominator or either you can both divide or, both, or multiply. We find out we give you tips of conversion in, 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 the, in the near future, right? Tips. And then uh, uh, we'll, we'll tell you, right? But then uh, that's the English system, and also we have more, right? Put it in that, that's a metric system, or you have uh, uh, one uh, kilometer, right? Equal one thousand meter. Then don't you you don't use this directly. You use one thousand meter per. That's per meter here. Per kilometer. The per concept. In your notes, I have a table listed as textbook style. Converting factor. And here is the price tag. I said the price tag, but I said the per concept style. Now we have to use the first concept style converting factor for converting uh, units for any entities. Now here the metric and then the needs would be English, right? English, right? English, you have well, one, one yard, I say okay, one yard equals three feet. So this is going to be listed as three feet per yard. Now that's converting factor. Now if it's between them, right? That's what we need. No, we need between them. So then the second one is between between metric and English for links, right? So I had a little space here. So I would have to introduce say, okay, English is longer, one mile is longer than one kilometer. So one mile equal one point 609 kilometer, but we don't use that, we use a price tag per concept based uh, conversion factor right here. It's going to be 1.609 kilometer was a metric system per what? Per mile, English system, right? Per mile. So, mile underneath. Now that is, I will box it, that is the converting factor between English system and the metric system and I use that one all the way through the entire course, you will never get it wrong. So in your notes, all on your notes, you will find out there will be per concept based converting factor for length, mass, time, blah blah blah, blah even later on in the mole, the amount of counts, uh, amount of substances, we all have to use per based price tag per concept based conversion factor to do the unit uh, unit conversion and it will never get you wrong always get you right but we're going to introduce tip in the future now in the 10 seconds now we're going to say we have more what next section part four we're going to go into full scale of conversion between metric english systems on uh, mass links time uh, amount of uh, moles and uh, everything. Okay, so I uh, see you. I uh, see you in second, in, in second, next part. All right. All right.
All right.